Yo, what is up, my little tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on the Streets of Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. We just hit 60k, so thank you for 60,000 subs. Hopefully, y'all have learned a little bit or maybe found something enjoyable. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash newmot for all of your magic card related needs. That's my affiliate link with them, so thank you. We got some more March of the Machines. I've been loving the format a long, long way away from the uh <laughs> the draft bar is mom from like one or capenna or whatever anyways what do we got here we got a Vorn cluck six six trample reach for five you can't go wrong with that you get to grab some lands potentially uh if it enters and then all of the all of the praetors are just sick this one is a mill 10 put up to two creatures from among the milled cards specifically onto the battlefield distribute seven one one counters among any number of target creatures you control and then end of ten, until end of turn uh, creatures you control gain pay one. This creature fights target creature you don't control, and then you get to flip back in Vorn Clex. So, can't go wrong with the Praetor. Is this the best one? Absolutely not. But is it good? Yes. Uh, so, the thing I've been doing, and it's been working out relatively well, is just forcing five colored good stuff. I said this, I think, in yesterday's draft video. I've said it on stream earlier today. You just take the bombs, the removal, the fixing. Um, more specifically, you take the, the removal and fixing above basically anything, and then in packs two and three, you're just going to get past so many good cards. It doesn't matter what color you're playing if you're going five color, right? And because the packs have so many rares, and you can open up to like three rares in a single pack, you're going to be past good cards no matter what. Gigantha, maybe not the best of them. Uh, I do like the tap ability, but... What else do we have here? We have a Deadly Derision for some removal. We have a little bit of fixing here with one of the tap lands. Intercessor, great land cycling card. Pretty happy just taking the Deadly Derision here. Now, as much as I say I've been forcing five color, if there's obviously a huge signal for a specific archetype, um, I'm not going to overlook that, right? I'm not going to take like a worse card just because I like to do the five color strat, so... Here, for example, we could take Cosmic Hunger over the Blighted Burgeoning, right? Burgeoning actually has been really, really good, even if you're not going multicolor. Um, this type of land enchantment generally is not super good. Like, I'll play them in these multicolor decks or whatever, but the Incubate 2 really allows you to, uh, to stay in it because it gives you a creature as well, right? Gift of Completion is a decent one for the Phyrexian deck, or even if you're just not even playing Phyrexians, you're generally going to pick up a few Phyrexians for value. I'd say the Cosmic Hunger is probably on par with the bur Burgeoning, maybe slightly better. But I've had some really good success with Burgeoning, so I'm actually going to take it pretty high here. Says he's not going to take a worse card. Does it anyways. What do we got here? I haven't had the Black Red Sacrifice deck be very good. Um, though that's not to say that you can't have a good Sacrifice deck. There are some good effects. In fact, if you look at this pack alone, mirrored in a... Oh, wait, no, I'm, that's, I'm thinking of the wrong card. I was thinking of that this one this was the Sack of Creature Draw 2. Wary Thespian has been really, really good for some reason. I don't know why. Two mana, three one, so it can apply some really early pressure. It's good with all the punch effects, and then it has value when it enters or dies, so maybe that's why. I mean, it does quite a bit for two mana. Gloomfang Mauler, another fantastic land cycler. I think I like taking the caves here. Let's get that fix on. Jungle Hollow, no. Jungle Hollow versus Grasp. I think here we would probably lean towards taking the removal spell. That's the best card in the pack. Invasion of Muraganda is okay. Um, it is a removal spell. It's really slow, and it has a lot of defense or whatever. So it's not the easiest thing to flip. We'll take the Grasp here over the Hollow. That's, that, again, that's probably really, really close, though. Oh, this is a nice pack. Light Reaper Thalad has just been a really, really solid one. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Can flip for 3. Turns into a 3-3 three, three with an immediate 1-1. One, one, and then when the 3-3 three, three dies, you get another 1-1. One, one, so... Nice value there. Um, I think at the beginning of the format, I probably would have taken Gargantua, but you still want to get to the board early if possible. There are aggressive decks, of course. Red-White and I think Blue-White being the most aggressive. A couple of other decent cards there for sure. Another Bloodfell Caves is not awful. There's a Tidal Terror, though I don't think we want to lean towards that. 
Another one that's been a little bit impressive is the Converter Beast. It doesn't look like much, but 4 mana for an 05 Incubate 5 has proven to be solid. Like, the 5-5 five five is just great. Scornblade Berserker is also okay. Um, Yeah, I think I take, like taking the land there over the Beast. Timret has been... Oh, what? That is... I was going to say Timret's been really good too, but that is a big signal. Volcanic Spite's got to be one of Red's best commons and we're getting an eighth pick this might be the best red common so now i'm really glad i took those blood fell caves oh wow we're wheeling gargantua pick nine but we also have a mauler an informant and a shatter the source again i think the removal and the fixing is better here but that is definitely some kind of black signal Windscarred Crag looks okay. This has been a really, really bad removal spell. Like, in in theory, it's okay, but it has not been impressive by any means. Um, if you need something like this, sure. But I think Searing Barb is quite weak. We could also just take a 3-2 Death Touch here. Okay, Dreg Recycler is fine. Barrage is also okay as well. This is actually has been a surprisingly decent card. There are enough one-toughness creatures in the format that even if your opponent's not playing blue or white for the really, really good effect, I think it's still playable otherwise. Yeah, there's that jury. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's a world where we could still be black-red. Definitely. We haven't really seen any green. Like, I opened the Vorinclex, but red's been extremely open, and we've seen good black as well, so... I haven't liked the Bane Splitter. I do like the Treasure Maker. And then just filler there. Okay. <laughs> Opening an invasion of Innistrad. Black, black, two. Flash, five defense battle. Gives a creature minus 13, minus 13 when it enters. And then if you flip it, what happens? You get two, two, twos immediately. And you can exile a card from a graveyard. If you eat a creature, you get a two, two. So just a very strong card. Not ex like Not a huge bomb. But pretty close. Good removal into a wave of zombies is nice. Now, what are we passing? Losing out on another deadly derision would be good. Furnace rains for, again, if we ended up on red-black would be fine. Yeah. Oh, I guess captive weird is also fantastic, but we're pretty far away from blue. Collective nightmare versus final flourish. Geoderm's also great. I misread this the first couple times. It's whenever you attack... So, you don't have to attack with this to get the buff. You can play this and then attack with one other random creature, and it still gets some kind of trigger. It's weird, but I think Final Flourish is actually better than Nightmare. I love the fact that this has Convoke, and I think it's a great card, but Flourish is just a lot better. Plus, this has the Sac Synergy. Yeah. Looks like we're probably leaning towards the Red-Black Sacrifice deck. I mean... There's a little bit of green here, but we haven't really seen much white. We've seen zero green since first picking it, so. As much as I would like to do the five color shenanigans, this is the, probably the spot to be. Um, this is a good card. It's just slow. I've been really, really happy with either blade agent on turn two. And we have a bit of removal already. I think I'm actually supposed to take the agent here. Yeah. It's just a really annoying two drop. Like, trades with basically anything, and then of course it uh, turns into a nice flip card that can draw you extra cards. Wow, what is this? Kroxa and Kunoro, 6-6 six, six for 6. Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink, ETB. You may exile 5 cards from your graveyard when you do return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. I do have a bunch of fixing already. Um, that's pretty bomby. We're losing out on a Spite. Another Jury, another Windscarred Crag, I, yeah. Six mana, six, six, Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink. Okay, that's good. Hmm. Elder Giant Dog.
Like with the fixing we already have, we could even run up to like two planes or whatever and it wouldn't even feel that bad. Plus, Deadly Derision also helps fix. If we can get like one or two more of those, that wouldn't be bad. Man, so many volcanic spites going around. Gosh. Some drafts you never see a single spite, even if you're in red. And this one we've seen like this is the third or fourth. We had to pass one or two already. I don't don't mind Invasion of Asgol. I don't think it's like amazing. If it comes back around, I'll definitely take it, but Spite's a higher pick order there for me. Jeez Louise, Red is just so open. Red Ship is surprisingly good. Into the Fire is pretty decent too. Like the versatility of this card I think means I'm going to take it over Invasion of Mercadia, which is another crazy good invasion. Wow. All four of these red cards are just like good. Um, Skittering Surveyor, that's nice actually. It's a good card to sacrifice away to something like the um, Final Flourish and then fixes for our Kroxa and Kunoros. Okay, this is a pack that's not so good. Do we want the Mirrodin Avenged? I suppose we have quite a few smaller creatures. Maybe running one of those is okay. There's the Furnace Rains, that's nice. That's the uh, Active Treason effect that... What happens again? Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or battle, you gotta make a treasure, sure. My sack effects right now, I have one... One? Yeah, like I said, there just aren't many sacrifice effects in the format. There's the, like... That's a late Geoderm, but we'll take the Heal Slasher. There's the uh, Uncommon Red black card it's like some stormclaw rager or something i think it's called um well there's jury on so I, again i don't even want this i'm gonna take the windscarred crag for fixing easy white splashing in fact that's a nice pickup i might even end up splat oh, out of the source last pick i might even play this realm ba breakers crag <laughs> no i might even oh, oh, play this realm breakers grasp now okay well, we've opened one of the best cards in the format, if it's not the best. It's double white. I'm going to take it. We have Fixing. Elish Norn. 3-5 for 4. It's got Vigilance. Whenever a source and opponent control deals damage to you or a opponent you control, that source's control loses 2. Sack 3 creatures. Flip Elish Norn into an unbeatable Saga. Well, we were looking for a sacrifice effect, and I guess I got it. Jeez Louise. Okay. Here we go, I guess. Um, Is there any way I can pivot out of one of these colors? Probably not. I guess I could end up splashing red, maybe? It, I mean, red has all of my removal. So maybe splashing black? I guess I should probably just take the land cycler here then. Black's got all my early game plays though. Ugh, this is tough. Eh, I'm probably still just going to take the agent. Another collective nightmare that we didn't take the first. There's a stoke the flames here too. I mean, this is just going to be full on three color at this point. Another collective. Another... Okay, we're, we're taking the deadly here for sure. Yeah, removal with treasure making. Invasion of Theros. Ara, god, or demigod. That is neither. Let's take the informant number two, I guess. Got the barrage here. Another skittering surveyor. Very good. Yeah, we're just going hardcore Mardu. That's not true. We're still red, black, splashing white, but we're just happening. <laughs> we're just splashing a double white card. Oh, but, oh, oh, seventh pick Thrill Seeker. What is happening? It's not like some crazy bomb that wins the game, but it's just a good card. I don't know what's going on. Our deck looks cracked. Um, 
I'm at 25 playables. We can honestly shave at least one of the Shatter the Sources, if not both. We have so much other removal. I guess I could cut the Grasp too, but... Like, look at this removal. Grasp, Flourish, Two Spite. We have Fire, Rains, Thrill Seeker, Double Derision, Stoke, Invasion, Shatter. Yeah, I have just an infinite removal here. I guess the Ral's Reinforcements is not terrible for sacrificing. Don't think I'm playing any of those. Um, I guess Furnace Reigns may be not good. We don't have that many sacrifice effects anymore. I pick up the second on the wheel. What a deck. 2-3 haste that turns into a 3-4 flying is not bad. I mean, are we splashing this? How many Phyrexians do we have? Two, but then a lot of the creatures flip into Phyrexian. How many flipped Phyrexians do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Wait a minute. Oh god, even the dread ship is super good. Dude, what is happening? This draft was absolutely bonkers. Crazy that I opened a Voren Klex and we're not even playing it. Um, I guess Artisan, or maybe these rats can be cut. The reinforcements isn't that important. I mean, I do want to have a healthy number of creatures for Elishnorn, but it's not, like, vital. We have a, a decent bit of Incubate, too, so the creature, or the... Yeah, the creature counts a little bit higher than it looks. I still feel like the artisan might be a cut. We can just go like that, maybe. 11 creatures plus... 1, 2... Oh, maybe that's a little bit too low. I mean, maybe I just don't need this Shadow the Source. Run the two one one tokens instead. All right, double blood fell caves, double wind scarred crag. Two planes should be plenty with the double uh, surveyor plus double treasure maker. So six, seven, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. A little bit heavier red, I guess. Although we do need double... We have a lot of double black. Oops. So it'd be 7, 8, 9 black, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 red. Okay. Um, yeah. This deck looks good. I hope it plays out well. Because it definitely looks pretty darn good. Okay, removal, removal, removal. Creature that acts as removal. So, I remember, I am a little bit heavier on black sources than red, so... Should find some black sources soon, ideally. Great draw, good. I want to play the Bloodfell Caves themselves. Ooh, four colors in the first two lands. Love it. OK, 
Okay, the invasion of Pyrulia. I think I'm okay just running out the Thrill Seekers of 3-3 next turn. Something to do. Retop! Reveals the invasion of Tolvada. Yikes. Absolutely busted one. So they are playing four colors, it looks like. This is especially good with the land cyclers, and if they can flip it, I mean, generally that's going to win the game. Make a 2-1 flying lifelink every turn, in addition to giving your other tokens extra value is nuts. They did miss a land drop here, though. So I think what I like doing is just... Uh, killing their creature and start trying to flip my uh, invasion, which I can do with one of these Volcanic Spite next turn. So put the pressure on them, because they might be doing more powerful things. But while they're stumbling, we want to really press the gas. Okay, that's more or less fine. Now they hit a land. We go land pass. End of their turn, we can spite the invasion to flip it. Don't actually want to lose a card here, do I? And then... I can exile any card. So let's eat their creature and make another 2-2. Two, two. Ah, this is pretty bomby. I mean, it's not a full-on bomb, but it's pretty bomby. Casually attack for 11. Sure. They're playing scroll shift in their deck too. Hmm. How many? Wonder how many entered effects they have. But looks like we're gonna get them there. Okay, that went well for us. Soon, soon I'll be on the smiley face train. We're not there quite yet. We're still reliving memories of all will be one. But soon, trust me. This format, this format's gotten me refilling my love tank. Uh, that's a keep. We're on the draw. We have spite to cycle. And we only really need to find one black source. And I don't need to find it immediately, although it would be nice to find it relatively soon. Oh, that's also really good, too. Put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then draw that many plus one. Right, nice, and we are going to get a spite target here. I think I like pitching the javelin here. Keeping all the black cards. Okay, well. Let's put the agent and the reinforcements on the bottom. Draw three. Phew! Scary. <laughs> Almost didn't find a black source there. Can this target enchantments? You can. Enchantment permanent can't attack or block and it's activated. Okay, so that's good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to enchant their incubator token so they can't flip it, and that'll let me um, play out my tap land. We basically can kill anything they have. Like, yeah, Valkyrie, we can kill that. That is a fat bomb, by the way, but... 
Minus 13, minus 13 says go away. The only downside about not um, playing the Shatter the Source is that I cannot, unfortunately, um, immediately flip my invasion by shooting it, you know? I'm going to put a 1-1 one, one counter on their Sky Warden attack. They can turn their thing into a creature, but the enchantment should stay on it. Yeah. Ooh, that was a nice draw. So now I immediately... Oh, wait. Their creature has... Vigilance. Right. So we'll kill that. Get a treasure. Land. Red ship. Crew. And yeah, this is insane. Flip. Get two zombies, can start just making zombies. Still have a removal spell in hand. Jeez Louise. Our deck is so good. <laughs> ay ay ay. So I get two lands, that's whatever. So we go activate this, eat their boon, make a 2-2. Crew, animate, land, attack for infinity, say go. And even if they have sunfall here, they still just lose. Yep, that ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> Good deck, good draws. Hard to beat. <laughs> one for one removal is not what you need here in the face of overwhelming card value, my friend. Alright, yeah, I mean... They were already dead on board. I had four two twos and a one one that they couldn't do anything to, so. Holy smokes. Who needs Elishnorn? Not me. Just give me that invasion of whatever it's called. Okay, two oh on to the next. Decent hand. If they don't have removal, we might be able to flip the agent and just start drawing a lot of cards. Since we have two removal spells to back it up. Although this one... I mean, this will be good if they go wide with small creatures after we level this up to like a 3-3, three, three, assuming we get two. Hello. Green-white is usually... The counter base deck. I'm actually going to go with the two 1-1s one -ones here instead to put a little bit more pressure on. Yeah, that's fine. I can attack into that. Ooh, baby, that's really good for me, because now I just get to flip my agent. Gonna leave back one token as a blocker so they don't do something crazy. Alright, I mean, even just drawing one card with that Mind Stinger there is so, so good. The Mind Stinger also becomes a 4-4 with the uh, Sculpted Perfection. Speaking of... That's fine. They're just letting me draw a bunch of cards, so... 
I'm gonna leave both tokens back now. Because I can turn those into 4 4s this turn. I probably should kill the Inquisitor before they can start getting too much value from it. Because the Inquisitor is actually really annoying. But I think playing the Javelin that, that turn made a little bit more sense. Okay. Wow. So now they have Vigilance as well. So that's going to turn into a 4-4 attacker this turn. With Vig. Okay, I will actually trade here. And then I'm going to spite their Inquisitor. Oh, that's good too. I don't think they're chumping, so let's draw the card and see what we hit first. Not bad, not great. I mean, look, look at this removal I have in our hand. Let's go pop this, pitch the prankster. And I guess we'll just play out one of our skitterings this turn. <laughs> well, there goes my invasion of Innistrad. That's too bad. My hand is kind of nuts, though. So they can go flip, flip. Attack. I can go chump, chump. Yeah, so we have a good turn here. Chump, chump. Oh, I only have one white source. Shoot. I needed to have actually grabbed a planes last turn, didn't I? I did. Okay, well, that's fine. Grasp this. No. No attack. Big mistake for me not to have grabbed another planes last turn. Would have been able to play Sculpted Perfection plus the Grasp, attack in for four, draw another card. So, we're going to just chump here with our Surveyor instead. Okay, that's fine. Great draw. Let's play the Perfection. Makes our Mind Stinger a 4-4. Four, four. Attack. Scroll shift. That's pretty nice. Um, oh yeah, it's a 5-5 five, five now, too. Damn. Alright, well, at least it trades. Awkwardly, I do play out the land so I can animate and stoke. But that means I draw one fewer card with Into the Fire. Trade, block here first, and then stoke after blockers are declared in case they had a way to stop it. Okay, that's another annoying one. They're going to flip it now. So let's draw two. Good. Yeah, we're just going to blow that up. Alright, this is kind of a top deck battle. Ah, oh, man. They keep drawing good ones. 
Speaking of good. Now, I don't have any creatures for it, so it's just a 3-5 right now, but I guess it's a 5 Rexian to a 4-6. Yeah, awkwardly, this is a position where Elish Norn isn't that amazing. Um, should I be playing out my land? No, because I have another Volcanic Spite. Okay. Wow, that is insane. That is an absolutely insane draw. You know what? So I think I try to get them here by just attacking for four. And then I put this on the Elish Norn and shoot it for six. There we go. Well, I thought they had a good draw step, but then we drew Elish Norn into Voldaren, and uh, yeah, my deck's nuts. My deck is insane. Rio. Pretty nice hand. Pretty nice freaking hand we have here. That second caves gives us double black. Okay. Eyes of Gataxius, sure. I'm not going to use the Grasp on that because it's only a 3-3, which we can use Spite on. Um, yeah. Sure. Go ahead and pitch a Mountain here. Timoret, you got it. I guess I'll just play out the perfection for now. I don't think we'd really mind them eating graveyard or hitting me for two. Okay, that probably needs to die. Oh, they milled three lands. That's annoying. There's our other white source. Um... I guess I'm going to grasp that and then pass. Holding up the flip of our incubate token. Oh, they can tap my artifact with that. That's a little bit annoying. Sure. Good. Okay. Agent pass. Hold up Stoke for Timoret. It's fine. Three cards left in their hands. Temporal cleansing. All right, we will shoot Timoret in response. Good. 
And I'll just put that on the bottom. I don't think we need that. We actually do want to grab another planes here. So that I can play Elish Norn and immediately flip. Potentially. That would be seven. No, yeah, seven mana total. Ooh! Mind Rot here is nuts. I think. Hmm. I mean, I guess I'm not flipping my invasion anytime soon. Jeez. Well, that's got to be terrifying for them to see. That was a great draw. Yeah, let's play it a little bit slow. Valid plus flip. And then any one land lets us go Elish Norn plus immediately activate. Okay. Well, they didn't even get to see Elish Norn. <laughs> Imagine you play Mind Rot versus your opponent and they discard Deadly Derision plus whatever that invasion is. Like, how scared are you? Okay, 4 0, 4 0. Game five time. Snap Keeper. Mm, looks like if we cast Spite, we'll probably pitch a Swamp. Invasion of Ergamon. Again, man, I've never been impressed by that one. Ah, drew a two drop. It is two mana. It makes a treasure. Like, it's not bad, but... I guess they're red-green, so they're playing the... Oh, well, maybe not, but... They are in the colors of the... Uh... Oh my gosh, it gets a 1-1 counter. That's a really sick turn three. I mean, luckily we have Stoke for it next turn, but... Jeez Louise. That had to be their ideal curve. Yikes. Core Claw? Awesome. Um... Go itch. Good. Invasion of Innistrad, that's the name. They've had a good draw, man. They get to immediately flip that for value too if they want. Sure. Let's go Surveyor, grab Planes, turn off their Thalid and pass. Yeah, I mean, our deck just has so much efficient removal. Sure. Search your library for a land or battle and put it into hand. Yeah, I guess we're trading. Looks like they might be out of gas, and we still have two removal spells in hand, so... Feels okay. Now, obviously, they could use some random burn spell on that, too. I guess I'll hold the land in case they have discard. It's fine. We found a threat! It's a good one, too. Oh no! The last removal spell they had was an Incubate one. Wow, that was perfect for them. That's the swing in the game right there. Jeez. Alright, they get to go search for another battle, potentially. That'd be funny if they didn't have any more battles. 
Oh, they have the mind rot. Well, good thing I didn't discard my hand. Or play out my land, I should say. Okay. We might lose this one. So that flips into a 2-2 two, two flyer that deals damage to me if I have two or fewer cards in hand. So the nice thing here is that they have to send both, which means I can just eat their 1-2. Oh, they attacked me with that. Oh, they messed up. I guess they're holding a removal spell for my... For my... Marauder here? Because if they let me flip this, I win. But even still, huh. Okay. Like, if they attack and flip that, I still... Unless they drew something, I still get to flip my invasion. So they get the 4-mana 2-2 two, two flyer that deals damage to me. It's pretty good. Yeah, ship them both. Oh my god, are you kidding? They drew another one of those things? So, good news here is that this deals damage to the uh, battles as well. So I'm going to kill their flyer, I'm going to flip the battle, and we still win, basically. That was a really good draw for them. Now we just start eating creatures, getting tutus, and everything is hunky-dory. GG's. This deck is too good. Too good. Five zero. Can we get the perfect seven zero? I think that would be my first seven zero of the format. I probably just jinxed it, but I mean, look at this hand: two land, five removal spells. Does it need a way to win? No. If it stops the opponent from winning outright, then who needs it, right? Looks like Spite will probably be used to fill that and get rid of the Grasp. Oh, they have that card. I lied. We probably want to kill that instead. Okay, I mean, if they just flip their weird this turn, that's really bad for us, I guess. They get a lot of value from that. That's fine. Let's bide our time. I will use Derision if they attempt to flip the captive. They just attack for two, I'm okay with that. Okay, this is real good. So let's end of turn, blow up the captive. And go ahead and just deal two damage to everything now. Blue red is the convoke deck, so I think killing four creatures is really nice. Damn. We can burn the invasion for four. We already used into the fire, which would have been two more damage on it. 
Just play your title horror or whatever. Perfect. Title terror, that's what it's called. Invasion, give it minus 13, minus 13. Best draw there would have been like the 4 1 hasty. That's what we don't want to see. We don't want to see uh, divination effects. Ooh. Okay, deck. I need to find something that can attack. But obviously they need to find a creature or something of their own. That's, that's beautiful. If this somehow doesn't die or get countered... That'll be a game win if it hits. Oh, God. All right, geez. The nuts. Two, two, twos immediately. We will play out the land now. I actually messed up by tapping both red sources because now I can't stoke the flames. But it shouldn't really matter. Yeah, that doesn't matter. So that was probably one of the cards they had stuck in their hand since I didn't have any creatures. <laughs> Good luck. I do lose my second white source, but even if we draw Elish Norn now, it doesn't matter. Seven, eight, nine. We can triple activate. We make three two twos end of turn now. Let's activate this and stoke off of the token, and then we can make another afterwards. Oh, no! I meant to click a creature! I just missed my two-turn clock. Whoops. Too hasty with that. We still have them dead next turn, but they should be at eight, and I should have eight power on the board. That is pro-blue, pro-black. Yeah, now we... maybe don't have lethal. No, we still get three tokens here. We're fine. Um, okay, we'll just go for it. I don't even think this is the right play, but again, I misclicked the previous turn, so. Okay, you know, I said this invasion of Innistrad wasn't a complete bomb, and I still think that's kind of true, but if you can flip it, like, that's the only thing holding it back. It's a battle that you need to flip with five damage. But I've been doing I've been doing well in flipping it, and every time it flips, we win. So I still stand behind the fact it's not a true bomb. But you're gonna win if you can flip it. We're now six and zero. Let's see if we can do v seven zero. Come on, please one time, for all the marbles. Six zero on the play hand again is insane. Seems like the Invasion of Innistrad is just glued to my opening hand. Okay, we already have double white for potential, uh... Potential Elish Norn. I guess we're gonna spite the Wrath and pitch the Mountain. If we can find one Black Source, we are gonna be sitting pretty- Oh, I didn't even notice! The opponent's on Garuda, too. Nice. All right, land me. Thank you. Yeah, let's just run it out. Why not? What's the wording on this? Whenever a source and opponent control deals damage to you at a permanent, you control that sort of... Okay, so that's not actually that relevant versus blue-white right now.
God, I hope they just put Garuda in their hand. No, you're not even going to give a shot? Oh, boo. <laughs> All right, well, we got our wish. We went 7-0. and oh. And, uh, yeah, this, I mean... Oh, you know what we never got to do? Kroxa and Kunoros. How many games were won just off of Invasion of Innistrad? Probably like five. We never got to do this. Yeah, okay. Well, that deck was amazing. Our, I, I, <laughs> kind of speechless, right? Look at this removal we have. What a freaking deck. Vision, Invasion, Stoke, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 removal spells, high quality creatures, good fixing. Format solved again. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back tomorrow. Bye bye.